Now, Russia has unleashed its third major aerial assault on Ukraine in just four days, signaling a significant intensification of its military offensive. The relentless bombardment combined with advanced missile technology with swarms of unmanned aerial vehicles is aimed at weakening Ukraine's energy infrastructure. And our next port gets more details. Sirens blaring in Kyiv. The skyline of the Ukrainian capital is erupting again. The Russian attack is relentless. In the pre-dawn hours, the Russian forces initiated a massive coordinated strike, launching a barrage of five missiles and 74 Shahid drones against Ukrainian targets. The multi-pronged assault, marked by sheer volume and diverse aerial weaponry, appears designed to overwhelm Ukraine's air defense systems and penetrate critical infrastructure. A Russian missile struck the hometown of Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky, Krivi Ri, on a day designated for mourning the previous day's attack. That claimed four civilian lives in a hotel. Ukraine, meanwhile, continues to inflict pain on the Russian forces in Kursk region. These images released by Kyiv shows Ukrainian military attacking Russian forces. Russia has deployed its advanced weaponry to negate the threat of Ukrainian drones that are wreaking havoc. Russian defense forces released these images saying it takes only one projectile to hit target while downing an unmanned aerial vehicle in the border area of Kursk region. Russia has also released these images of Su-25s bombing Kursk region. That essentially means Russia is bombing its own territory to repel the Ukrainian forces. Amidst these attacks, Ukrainian officials are intensifying their calls for Western allies to lift restrictions on the use of long-range weapons provided to Ukraine. With no let-up in the devastation caused by Russian bombardments, Kyiv argues it must have the ability to strike deep in Russian territory to effectively counter the threat. Bureau report, we on World is One. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of what is happening at this moment in the Ukrainian conflict, we're being joined by Mr. Gabriel Nerona, who's a former special advisor for on Iran at the U.S. State Department under the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and also the Executive Director of Polaris National Security and he's joining us live on this broadcast. Mr. Narona, thank you very much indeed sir, for joining us on this broadcast. And Vyond, let me in fact start off by this news that's just come forth that an F-16 fighter jet manufactured by the United States that was given to the Ukrainians to be used in this war has reportedly crashed. What does this actually mean for the use of F-16 fighter jets by the Ukrainians who at this moment appear to be under-trained for their use. Well, this is a very uh, bad news. The F-16 is an expensive program, uh, expensive platform. Uh, the issue here is that the F-16 pilots were only being trained uh, about a year and a half ago in Arizona, part of the Southwest United States. And so it takes normally years and years to reach the level of proficiency to be able to pilot uh, an F-16. Uh, this has been expedited, and so they don't necessarily have all the right equipment. Um, there were some in the U.S. military who argued that uh, the F-16 was actually improper uh, platform for the for the Ukrainian military because some of their airfields can't accommodate uh, this jet. So this is unfortunate, but it's perhaps not surprising given the rush nature of how this military support has been given to Ukraine. Um, if the pilots have been allowed to be trained two years ago, three years ago, mm -hmm. a lot of this could have been averted. And also considering as to how embarrassing it has been that it has crashed due to a pilot error and not been shot down, uh, will the United States perhaps relook at its policy of transferring the F-16 fighter jets to the Ukrainians? Uh, I don't think so. I think one other option, however, is for retired U.S. and European pilots to actually go to Ukraine 
and fly the platforms themselves. Obviously, no active U.S. service members and, and European soldiers would be used. But if they're retired people who want to volunteer, that's a good option uh, to actually be able to use these programs and, and aircraft effectively better than Ukrainian pilots could use them. You know, it'll be interesting to know as to what the Russians will have to say for retired American fighter jet pilots to be flying these jets for the Ukrainians. But to talk about what is happening at this moment in Kirks, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky said that the reason why the Ukrainians started off with this Kirk's incursion was to force the Russians to negotiate on fairer terms. Do you think the Ukrainians have succeeded in opening any front for negotiations? Well, there is no war that can be won just on defense, uh, just like there is no football match that can be won just on defense. Uh, it's important that Ukraine take the war to Russian territory. They have bargaining chips to be able to use to get Ukrainian territory back. Uh, and I think the further they go in and the further in costs they can impose on Russian energy infrastructure uh, and, and the Russian political system, the better chance they will have that. I think everyone expects there's going to be negotiations next spring um, and everyone is trying to gain as much leverage as they can right now. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Gabriel Nerona, for joining us and getting us that perspective there. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.